Hello again, welcome to another episode of Turnip 28 Content. Continuing with the Mushroom Army, we're going to take the rest of the box of the Victrix French, which consists of the Grenadiers with the nice big hats, and we're going to cut them out and assemble them. I was going to go for 18 originally, so I could have 3 units of 6, but then cut back and did 12 instead, because I have an idea for the last 6. As with the previous times I've used this kit, first step is to clip off the bases and keeping those off cuts because they will be useful for rubble and stuff later or on another project. Also, it doesn't really matter if you end up mangling the feet because these are not meant to be happy people anyway. I like to reuse the plastic bags that some of these kits come with to store the excess which also makes it easy to find them later. For the bases, using standard 20mm round from Renidra and plastic glue to assemble the models, starting by putting the bodies onto the bases. With the bodies secured to the base, I then attach the backpacks then following this, the arms. Taking six of each arm type, so you'd have six kind of pointing the muskets forward, and then six shouldering them. Assembling the gun arm first, and then the supporting arm afterwards, so I find that makes it a bit easier to fit them together. Finally, I trim the little nub inside the neck joint, and attach the heads. I found these heads didn't actually fit very well, so in a few cases I had to trim either the back of the collar, or the little kind of ponytail thing they had sticking out the back. But if there's any big gaps, you can go over and either green stuff them or mill up at them later. I also wanted to make a toady to accompany this unit, so using the Wargames Atlantic Camp Followers set on my mini factory, 3D printed one out and then assembled it. So we have a nice woman with a sun hat and carrying a rifle and a pistol. With all the models assembled and looking nice and proper, it was time to mess them up and add some mushrooms. So I mixed together some milliput and then started attaching blobs all over the models, which I then carved and sculpted into various mushroom shapes. The best way to do this is look at pictures of mushrooms online, find ones that look weird and interesting, and then just replicate them in the milliput. To create patches of bottom mushrooms, I took small balls of milliput and pushed them onto the model so they'd gently be flattened. I made larger crusts by taking a big blob of milliput and pushing some gills into the side. Then when the edges were complete, using the tip of the tool to create a kind of zigzag pattern across the middle, with some stretch marks between the two sides. To mirror what I'd done on the main kind of leader for the mushroom force, I covered the entire face of the toady with a mushroom growth which looks kind of fun when it's poking out underneath the hat a bit. For the bases, I used Vallejo Earth Texture Paste and slathered a good amount over it. With the ground texture paste dry, I went in with a layer of black Vallejo Surface Primer and brushed it on, including the base as well. I experimented with a new technique to kind of undercoat these guys, so taking a green paint and dry brushing it using a soft brush over the top half of the model, then a dark brown paint and doing the bottom 50% of the model. So you'd get a kind of pre-built mudness 
on the lower half of the model, and a kind of mushroomy growth base coat on the top. After this, I blocked in some of the main colours that I wanted to stand out, so the blue coat and the red trim, and then going in with the earthy kind of tones that match the existing undercoat, and giving some highlights onto the mushrooms, as well as the arms and some of the leather details. This is one of the quicker paint jobs I've done, as I was on a bit of a time schedule for this, but I think it came out okay, and the nice thing about Turned Up 28 is it's not meant to look neat, it's not meant to be tidy, so you can get away with a lot of kind of lazy painting. The two-tone dry brush I did at the beginning saved a massive amount of time here, as I didn't have to worry about too many of the details. Our entire sections, like the trousers, were already good enough that you didn't really need to go in and put paint over the top of them again, and you could focus on the nicer, finer details instead. To finish up the paint scheme and tie a few of the elements together, I used a watered down black brown wash and applied it all over the model. I also used a watered down paint instead of an ink, so you get a nice matte finish on it. To add a bit of detail to the bases, I mixed up some matte Mod Podge with some clump foliage, then put a few blobs on the bases of each of the models, so you get a bit of foliage and swampy growth at the bottom. This was then hit with the same wash to darken it down, before being given a few highlights of a brown paint. When that was dry, the regiment was complete, so I could use this as two regiments of six brutes, or one unit of twelve fodder. Combining this with a few mushroom zombies I created from before, I actually have enough for the entire force now. So some reduced size games of turn to 28 are now a possibility. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, hope to catch you next time.